Welcome everybody to this edition, the August the 10th edition of Testy Tuesday. I'm sitting here in the heat of the day under this glorious box elder tree. And behind me, wondrous, awesome poison ivy. Hey, come on over for a visit. We'll have some fun. We'll have a a good old time, especially with all these mosquitoes bouncing off my head as well. Hey, Testy Tuesday, that time when we test your incredible, look at that, another one, landed right on my head, in your incredible uh, biblical knowledge. And hey, we're moving on from King David and now to his son, the crown has been passed, his son Solomon. Solomon, as he takes the reins, um, well, you can read it in First Kings. He does a couple of things that kind of make us really scratch our heads with or without mosquitoes landing on him. But also, um, he has some positive attributes. And that's what we usually think about with Solom, right? Wise king and things like that. Well, that's what we're going to talk about in our lesson. This is the alternate Old Testament reading. It starts at 1 Kings chapter 2, uh, verses 10 to 12, basically saying that David passed away and now Solomon is taking over the reins. And then you go over to chapter 3, and the story that we have today from chapter 3 is his prayer for... Well, that's what we're going to talk about. What is his prayer for? Um, God had said, hey, whatever you want, I'll give to you. And Solomon said, this is what I want. What is it that Solomon said? Number one, did he ask for an understanding mind? Number two, did he ask for a listening heart? Number three, did he ask for peace and victory over his enemies? And number four, did he ask for a long and prosperous life? Let's go through those again. An understanding mind, a listening heart, peace and victory over his enemies, or a long and prosperous life. You probably remember this story from Sunday school days. Because the answer is, or maybe I should say, the answers are. You can translate this one of two different ways from the Hebrew. Understanding mind or a listening heart. Literally, it's a listening heart. But most of your biblical translations will show an understanding mind or wisdom. But there's another word for wisdom, so let's not get into that, okay? An understanding heart. Wow. Uh, there, the prayer that Solomon has. Well, let's back up a second. You know what's interesting about this is Solomon had done a couple of things prior to this prayer that we would look at and go, Huh? And he's going to be king? And God's going to bless him? That's the thing about the Deuteronomic history that covers all the way through the books of uh, Samuels and Kings. Um, when you look at all that history, it's pretty honest. It has a favorable look at the relationship between Israel and God. As long as the people are faithful, things will go well. As long as they're not faithful, things aren't going to go well. Pretty simple, right? But it's also uh, pretty honest about some of these kings. And right off the bat, it kind of throws a few dingers in there about Solomon. Although it doesn't say anything bad about it right now. But it all starts adding up to the end of his life. Not ending quite as well as you would expect. Um... What are some of those things? These aren't part of our Old Testament reading for this Sunday, if you choose the alternate reading. But uh, Solomon has a few guys knocked off, killed, that were standing in his way. And I'm not talking about enemies outside of Israel. These are people right within the king's court. They're killed. Um, he makes an alliance with the Pharaoh of Egypt by marrying his daughter. Why would you do that? So you could consolidate your own power and not have to fear 
Egypt coming in and taking you over because Pharaoh's going to knock off his daughter's own husband. No, he's not going to do that. That's why you had all these different marriages take place. And as we're going to see later on in the story, that comes back to haunt Solomon himself as he marries all these women from all over the place. But they also bring all their gods into Israel to worship as well. Mm, that's not good. And we already see that right now at the very beginning of his reign. Not Again, not part of our text except a little sliver of it. What's Solomon doing? He's offering his sacrifices to God because he just loves God so much. Problem is, he's offering it on the quote-unquote high places. The high places, that's where sacrifices were made to the pagan gods the gods of Canaan Baal and a lot of other ones so why is Solomon doing it well there's a little editorial comment don't worry about it folks it's okay right now because God knows he's make making those sacrifices toward him because you know there's no temple yet built all right we'll give him a pass on that all right but that in Deuteronomy, that, that's kind of looked down upon very harshly, sacrificing in high places. So, just to get to our text for today, Solomon has a dream. God asks him, hey, ask whatever you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon really does, at this point, honestly say, here's what I want. I want to have an understanding mind, literally a listening heart. And God goes, that's awesome, Solomon. I can't believe that you asked for that. That's that's so wise of you to do that. So, wait a minute. He's asking for wisdom, and you're already calling him wise? Well, that's part of the deal. <laughs> when you look at the wisdom literature, those who are wise become wiser as long as they follow in the precepts of God. And that's what Solomon is doing here. So that's something that that's something good about Solomon, and for the most part, he does that. Like I said, when we get further along in the year, and we see a little bit more about Solomon, we see his shortcomings as well. But at least he starts out, at least he tries to start out on the right foot. It says it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this, and God then tells Solomon, because this is what you asked for. You know, I'm going to give you all that other stuff too. I'm going to give you a long life and I'm going to give you riches and this, that, and the other. And that indeed is what happens for Solomon. But as again, as you'll read later on, when that all gets to his head and he starts relying on his own power and his own might and he starts not really obeying what God has told him to do, things fall apart. After Solomon dies, there's a rebellion, a civil war, and the ten tribes up to the north, they form an independent state called Israel, and to the south, the two remaining tribes, where Jerusalem is located, the city of David, they form Judah. Yep, it's just the way things sometimes happen, right? But that is the lesson that will be read in some churches that follow the common lectionary, others will be having a lesson from the book of Proverbs, and we'll talk about that later this week. So for right now, stay cool, stay hydrated, get out in the swimming pool, cool down a little bit. It's hot, and just about the whole eastern United States is under this hot time right now. But hang in there, hang in there, have an awesome day. As you remember, the thing that Solomon asked for was a listening heart. Blessings be with you.